Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Nick Zulovich, part of the team at Cherokee Media Group and senior editor of Autofin Journal and Subprime Auto Finance News. In today's session, titled Eight Ways Dealerships Can Manage Demand with Speed and Efficiency, we have a great presentation in store from the experts at Podium. But before we get started, just a couple of quick items. You will be in listen-only mode for today's webinar, but if you have any questions, please just use the chat function here on Zoom to submit them at any time. We are recording today's session, so keep watch of your inbox for a message containing a link so you can review the great, the great presentation and share it with other teammates in your store. So without further delay, let's get to our experts, Scott Sabo and Logan Wooden from Podium. Gentlemen, it's all yours. Thanks, if you would, let's go ahead and uh, advance to the next slide. So uh, here's what we're gonna cover today. We're gonna talk a little bit first about today's market, kind of what we're seeing from a consumer behavior perspective. Uh, we'll follow that up with kind of refreshing and, and looking at some of the challenges that we're seeing and hearing about in the in the dealership space. Um, and then a little bit about lead management and some ideas uh, there to maybe, you know, improve performance. And then we'll talk about finally uh, some ideas on how you can manage demand, you know, given that the environment we're in probably isn't going to be changing anytime soon. Uh, and then open it up to Q&A. So next slide, please. So dealerships today are facing kind of a unique situation, right? And this isn't new. Demand's at an all-time high. Um, inventory short, but, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easier to make a sale given all these conditions. So next slide. Next slide, please. There you go. So inventory shortages, long delays, you know, they've, they've created kind of a unique market where the sales floor is no longer needing to negotiate on price with customers. Um, you know, you're not selling cars that, you know, basically don't even exist yet. Staff members are feeling more and more like order takers instead of kind of, you know, what they used to be as partners in the car buying experience. And constant communication with customers is really more important now, more so than ever, not only because customers are expecting it, but because it's really necessary to keep customers and to earn their business, you know, from an ongoing perspective as well. So nationwide labor shortages, COVID restrictions, you know, it's made it difficult to hire and maintain staff. You know, I think this coupled with high demand means that you know a lot of you are you know employees are more overworked and, and burnout we're seeing you know more churn I think in the dealership than what we normally have experienced over the years and so solutions that don't require additional headcount but can still help operate with speed more efficiency you know it's kind of what we're looking for and what we're what we're trying to uh, recommend and at the end of the day i think you know there's still a need to hit monthly sales quotas obviously and keep your employees and customers happy so you know challenge is you know how do you work with all that and what are some ways that that you can achieve that yeah scott if i can hop in here as well uh, my name is logan uh, i am a product marketing manager at podium and i spend a lot of time looking at the, the automotive customers that we work with. Um, and we're seeing this really across the board. Um, and the more dealerships can be smart about uh, saving time for both employees and clients, like really creates a win-win. So there's some, there's some real opportunities here that, that we're seeing. So we're excited to dig in on, on this topic in particular. So, you know, in the area of online shopping, coupled with, you know, the shifts that we're seeing in consumer behavior due to the pandemic, you know, it's, it's had a significant impact on the business in, in general. You know, these days, twice as many car shoppers start their research online versus in-store. Um, I think with the result of low supply and high demand, the average, you know, store is seeing record-breaking volume of leads coming in from myriad of sources. You know, things like website forms, chat windows, Google business profiles, review sites, you know, listing sites like cars.com, 
and then you add on, you know, email, phone calls, social media sites, you know, more. It's all contributing to, I think, uh, an increased volume of inquiries coming at the stores. And BDCs and sales teams are working hard to keep up and respond to every lead. But with the sheer volume of demand, you know, response times are often still probably considered slow. And I think worse than that, you know, some leads are falling through the cracks entirely and, and never get a response. Next slide. So at a time when, you know, customers are willing to look anywhere, you know, considering the, the low availability of in-stock vehicles, customers are casting their nets much wider nowadays. You know, they're looking even out of state to find the car that they want if it's in stock. Uh, so it's really important, I think, for stores to have a reliable process and ways to respond to all their potential customers, because I think, you know, coupled with the various sources and everything that we're seeing. And, and now knowing that customers are looking, you know, farther just to find something that's in stock, you know, you're going to see more leads as a, as a result. And so usually the stores that win are, are the stores that can respond sooner uh, is one aspect of it. So a great lead management process, you know, not only matters from a revenue and customer experience standpoint, but it can help you know, reduce employee burnout if, if you've got an efficient process to, to help with that. Yeah, Scott, something else that I'm, that I'm seeing here as I talk to uh, more consumers recently um, is obviously inflation is kind of becoming a hot topic this year. And, and we expect consumers are going to be you know, more picky with their purchases as well. So um, demand is still high. I think that's true across the automotive industry, but consumers are, being a little bit more choosy with where they're going to shop for the for those cars, um, and so yeah, to your point, uh, response time I think starts to really matter um, because the consumer is going to want to look for the the easiest dealership to work with, right? Um, so definitely something to keep in mind. But uh, yeah, let's keep moving here. So one study recently we found you know more than eighteen percent of dealerships never responded to prospects and only 16% responded within 15 minutes. Uh, alarmingly, I think the overall average response was still more than 24 hours. So I think, you know, there's a, there's a great opportunity to, you know, win if you can, you know, re-examine or examine your lead handling and response processes to set where you can efficiencies in place to where you can be you know, re able to respond faster and to more prospects, um, there's a huge opportunity to win because customers knowing that they're shopping multiple stores, you know, tend to go with the dealers uh, that show more responsiveness as the first, you know, entry point of deciding who to do business with. So, you know, dealerships that responded to prospects within 10 minutes were three times likely more to close. So there's kind of the stat that supports that where, you know, if you can tighten your process, you're increasing your, your success odds, you know, pretty, pretty dramatically. So slow lead responses can cost sales, right? Uh, data makes it pretty clear. 50% of the customers go with the first business that responds uh, for dealerships specifically. Those that respond to leads within 10 minutes, you know, three times greater close rate than the counterparts that take longer than 10 minutes. So with strategies that we're going to share today, you'll be able to, you know, hopefully create a scalable, very efficient process that can help you quickly get leads to, you know, the right person, the right teams, so that you can respond faster and, and stand out from your competition. And I think by doing this, you know, you should see a noticeable result in increase in, you know, conversions and sales and ultimately, you know, growth in, in revenue. The automotive industry not responding first really can easily, you know, equal loss sales as, you know, we've just talked about um, and a poor customer experience, which has, you know, even greater ramifications when you look at ongoing, you know, service and, and retention uh, goals that the stores have, obviously, it, that are attached to your brand. And so if you want to be part of the group that are, you know, closing at a higher rate, you also need to streamline, you know, lead management processes so that you can, you know, respond fast enough to leads, beat out your competition, route your leads and inquiries to the right person more quickly so that they have a, 
better chance of success because they're they're getting the route uh, leads in a more timely manner. And then get customers the correct information they need. So again, efficiency is part of it, but as you'll see as we go through more and more of this, it's also about some of the other you know key ingredients that customers are looking for, which is you know transparency, assistance through the process, um, you know being helpful, being thoughtful, you know, in terms of qualifying questions and, and help guiding them to the right vehicle and understanding their needs. So personalizing the customer experience really starts with knowing, you know, which channels your customers are on and how they prefer to communicate with you. Um, research shows there's historically been a big disconnect between the channels of what the customer prefers and the channels that businesses are using to engage with customers. And so, you know, we're, we typically reference that as, you know, meeting the customer, you know, where they are at. And what we're finding is a full 40% of businesses say that engaging with customers on their preferred channel has been the challenge, right? Just not having the right tools and the right equipment in order to make that effort to meet the customer where they are. And as more people prefer to complete more of the auto buying process online, you know, the, the real key to success is you being able to meet the customers where they're at. So in addition to text, uh, data from a 2020 benchmark report shows that pretty much every channel drives leads to a dealership. The key to consider with each of these channels is, you know, first of all, how quickly do we respond to leads from each of these channels? Uh, another question would be how, how we respond to leads, you know, as far as quality and, and type of information that you're providing to the customer assistance, et cetera. You know, so if your store, like many others, relies on a next day follow-up, including a call, an email, and a text, perhaps this process is a little bit slower and scalable than it could be. And even looking at you know, which mechanism you use as your first response. So we're hearing a lot of, you know, buzz in the space right now about companies and dealerships shifting to a text first strategy and using email and phone now as more of the follow-up kind of mechanisms versus the primary mechanisms. So there's, a, there's several ways that you could probably look at your process, both to realize more efficiency and at the same time, realize more effectiveness based on you know, which method you're using first. So text messaging, again, is becoming the more preferred method of communication for customers. You know, I think also in my family and, and the friends that they have, that's pretty much the only way they're talking to each other. Phone has become less of a, you know, method to assure that I can get a hold of somebody versus text, you know, I pretty much get a response all the time and, and find that they're talking to their friends all the time that way. It's what the consumers now are kind of leaning to is how they want to engage primarily with business. So, you know, 80% of the callers are saying that they would prefer to text versus leaving a voicemail. Um, texting, it shows in the results, it's, you know, significantly better response rate at 45% you know, when you compare that to email, that's, you know, still seeing, you know, in the low single digits, you know, as far as response rate. So to have the greatest success in communications with customers, you really want to leverage, like I say, the channels that are most efficient and effective for your customers um, and are likely to get the best response. So for example, you know, managing multiple text threads at once is much easier, more efficient than being on 15 one minute phone call after another, playing phone tag all day, sending an email, waiting for a response, you know, maybe hours or even days later. You know, it's just overall, it's proving to be much more effective and, and much more likely to build the relationship with the customer because of the personal nature of the conversation that happens through text versus, you know, email and some of these other channels that we're using. So, a few ways that you can communicate customer focused channels, you know, look to set up click to text on your Google business profile. You know, they're, they're including that message now to capture the customer when they're in moment, looking at all the other information about your business. It's a doorway to it, to an instant conversation right there. 
Uh, offering text as an option to get in touch with you on your website. A uh, number of ways you can do that through various widgets, you know, with the various vendors that are out there. And then, you know, vendors that can convert that chat message to a text conversation will also increase uh, effectiveness as well. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. So uh, we'll hop into our, our second point now here. Um, you know, making sure your buyers can easily find you. Uh, being visible in the channels your customers are on is probably the first critical aspect of generating inbound leads. Uh, you know, first and foremost, you simply need to be online, right? The vast majority of consumers um, are using the internet to, uh, to find a business near them, and that certainly applies uh, to dealerships. So uh, the conversation starts online. Nowhere is this more true than for car buyers. So 92% of car buyers do research online before they purchase a vehicle. That's you know, probably pretty obvious to us now. Um, but the average is 14 hours, spend an average of 14 hours researching before they actually speak to anyone um, at a dealership. That one surprised me uh, higher than I, than I would have guessed. Um, but the, the interesting thing as well is that when you compare consumers who shop first in person versus online, you know, twice as many consumers are going to start their research online, right? So the big takeaway, we, we need to be online, we need to be found online. Um, no surprise there. But you know, what does that actually look like? What's that mean? Well, that, that looks like uh, Google results and being found on, on Google Maps, right? Um, that's the most popular channel that consumers are using to start their research. Um, so your Google business profile is, the, uh, is your business listing associated with Google Maps. Um, and that can come up in organic search and paid SEO. Um, but it's important to also know your specific market uh, and your customers and what channels they may be on. They may spend in the, the region of the country that you live in, they may spend more time on Facebook. Uh, and that may be something that you need to emphasize. But broadly speaking, Google, if you, if you only get, could put your money in one place, Google is going to be the best place, of course. Um, as you can see, a few numbers on the screen here, you know, 94% of local business calls between Monday and Friday are from Google business profiles. Uh, so really dominant force there driving uh, phone calls to businesses. And 64% of consumers have used Google business profiles at some point to find contact details for local business. I mean, that, that even sounds, uh, uh, sounds underestimated to me. I probably do that every day. Um, so it's, uh, it's definitely the, the dominant channel now um, when we think about local search. Uh, what impacts this search ranking? Uh, well, uh, when deciding what businesses to serve up first, Google looks at a variety of metrics, um, but the key to winning that battle really comes down to reviews. So um, obviously proximity to wherever the person is searching from is, is important, but also there's overall star rating, uh, the quality of the reviews, like how long the reviews are, like how many words the reviewers write, what they talk about, um, how recent the reviews are, uh, how often post customers are posting a review. Um, and one overlooked metric is how often your business replies to reviews. That actually really factors in. Google looks for businesses that they deem responsive. And one way to look for that is see if they're responding to, to reviews. Um, so that's a definite, uh, definite thing to star in your notes if you're not doing that today. All these metrics play into how well you rank against your competitors when a customer searches for a car. Um, so location like, isn't the only thing that matters. Uh, as you can see here, about 75% of all the clicks go to the top like three to five search results. So you, you wanna be in that group um, as much as you can to capture those leads. Um, so like the quick takeaways for this, uh, this section here in terms of prioritizing your online presence, you know, look to collect reviews that will always increase your ranking. Uh, keep your Google business profile updated with current business hours, photos, contact info. My customers love seeing that. Um, and definitely set up a Google business profile listing for each of your business lines to capture more leads. We've seen some dealerships have a lot of success if they have um, like a service center attached, or maybe it's like a sister company that's a service center down the street. Um, that tends to perform really well if you have a separate Google listing for those two businesses. 
So those are the quick takeaways in terms of online presence and, and making sure it's easy for customers to find you. And then Logan, if I can add, I think, you know, in addition to that, a lot of you may be already working on these strategies, but uh, an opportunity to, to impact this further is looking at where you can automate. So, you know, uh, when you can automate review invites to ensure that 100% of your customers are getting an opportunity to leave a review versus maybe today it's 50 or 60%. That's going to go a long way to building volume. It's going to go a long way to seeing more higher, you know, average star ratings, stuff like that, which are all going to help build that, that presence and, and help you get into those top three to five spots on, on Google. So automation would be a, a good thing to really take a look at and see where you can do that to get more volume, higher scores, et cetera. Yeah, that's a great call out, Scott. Really, I mean, we want to make it easy, right? If, if it's a manual process, that really reduces the likelihood that it'll happen. So the more you can automate anything, uh, and the good software partner should, should allow for that, uh, that'll save a ton of time and really improve your results. So, Scott, I'll pass it back to you for our third point here. Yeah, thanks, Logan. So yeah, so once you have the basics of kind of generating inbound leads, you know, under wraps by ensuring that your customers can find you, they can communicate with you according to their preferences, you know, now it's, you know, time to think more strategically about how you use those, those channels. So for consumers, right, their phones are the bridge between online and offline conversations. And it's, it's the, this mobile device style that really becomes the center of, of all the opportunities. You know, it's the clear opportunity to turn mobile searches into customers. You know, it's no secret that, you know, mobile phones now are, are crucial in the modern customer experience. Pretty much everything I do, my wife do, when we see something that piques our interest, we pick up our phone that's right next to us and start that search process for that engagement right there versus, you know, going to a desk or firing up a laptop. Um, mobile websites, and mobile development have been hot topics for the last five to 10 years. You know, so everybody's kind of gearing to understanding that the, the primary device is really now the, the mobile device. But what's often overlooked, I think, is the ability for these devices to now become a viable, effective, productive communication channel. And that's, I think, what's really unique about it is the information that the customer is gathering, the research they're doing, you know, on the product and, and who they want to engage with is on the same device that they can immediately plug into and start a conversation once they've gotten that far in the process. And so it really can become a relationship builder, not just, you know, a browsing device, if you will. So while texting is clearly preferred by the consumer. Web chat is also an expectation from just about everybody in the industry and not just in automotive, but every industry. Um, it's becoming an easy opportunity for businesses, dealerships to kind of enhance that consumer experience by offering more immediate and personal ability to assist the customer in, in their journey. Um, half of all the visitors right now uh, come from a mobile device and expect the option to speak to a live agent. It's just becoming the norm now. Um, and oftentimes until everybody catches up, it can be what differentiates your business from the competition. Uh, desktop visitor rate isn't much different, um, but more than 40% of website visitors from desktop computer expect your, dub, your website to have a live chat option. So, how do we make sure we can capitalize on conversations that consumers expect? A couple ideas. Um, you know, we want to communicate the way your customers want to communicate. So again, to not sound too repetitive, you know, meeting the customer where they're at. So if you don't have already, consider adding a, a web chat option to your website, you know, and make sure that you can offer as personalized help as possible, not just automated answers to FAQs. Um, you want to be able to route web chat conversations to the right location, department, team, exactly. Again, as we've said, the quicker you can plug them into, you know, a person that they're going to end up building a relationship with during the purchasing process is going to go a long way to not only improve the experience, but building that relationship customers over and over, right, like to buy from people they know, like, and trust. And this helps do that and achieve that. 
Um, and if you can convert web chat conversations to text, you've got all the benefits of, of what that brings, right? So they don't have time to wait on your site. You know, they might start looking, start a conversation, go away. They've got questions later. You know, if you have the conversation through text, you can keep and maintain that engagement more easily than waiting for the customer to come back, sending another chat or waiting for them to get on a phone and call with additional questions or, you know, whatever is left to them. But if you can facilitate that through text, you're going to set yourself up for, you know, the ability to keep that uh, continuity of conversation going at the customer's convenience. And you know, it's accommodating their time constraints. It's just creating another channel where you can reach out and connect to your customer. So starting a text thread really is becoming a critical way to take the customer to that next stage in the, in the buying uh, journey. Absolutely. Thanks, Scott. Um, I mean, if, if, if I go to a website and start a live chat, you know, I, I rarely end up staying in front of my computer and continuing that conversation more than a couple minutes. So that's what I love about getting a text from businesses. Like I know I can respond to them at work or at the dentist, you know, wherever I happen to be. Um, but kind of moving on to our next point, um, keeping an eye on the clock here, uh, you know, we're going to talk about centralizing all of our leads into a single omni-channel inbox. So this is, this is one of my favorite topics. This is like a, a sneaky superpower, I think, um, that can really improve the efficiency of dealerships um, because tracking and routing leads is always a struggle um, and the right platform and the right piece of software integrated with your DMS or CRM um, can make things so much easier and provide a single organizable inbox for all inco incoming and outgoing communications, whether that's email or Facebook or Google messaging or uh, auto trader or, you know, however they're chatting into you. Um, to get that in one place is so helpful. Otherwise, you're, you're juggling conversations across 20 platforms, right? So um, the, the, there's a lot of goodness in this data here about auto leads uh, and how, how they can be left on the table. Um, the average dealership has 166 qualified sales leads each month, um, but 23% of those don't receive a follow-up within 24 hours. Uh, and 67% of those don't receive a follow-up within a week or longer. Uh, so there, there's, this is a leaky bucket, right? And a really easy way to plug that leak, uh, close that gap is having one source of truth that will allow you, to, allow you to route leads to the right person or team quickly and look through your leads to make sure they're all routed. Um, and this is critical, critical to improving response times. We talked about response times uh, a few minutes ago. Um, beating a competitor to the lead is, is huge in today's market. Currently, almost a quarter of the average dealer's leads don't receive that follow-up. Um, and we, that's, that's got to change if you want to be uh, a winning dealership in, in today's market, for sure. Um, so a few takeaways uh, when it comes to consolidating your messaging. Um, of course, you can offer texting and add a web chat option to your website, uh, even send text campaigns or something. But if those conversations aren't connected and aren't in the same inbox, it's just going to create another, a bigger problem, right? Why add a new channel if it's not, it doesn't fit into your existing workflows. So this is why it's important to centralize all of our customer communication. Um, so we recommend uh, using a marketing communication platform to send all conversations to one inbox. There's a lot of good ones out there. Um, obviously we're biased towards podium, but there's a lot of good ones out there. You know, this gives your staff the full benefit of customer contacts and, uh, information into past conversation history when they're talking with a lead. Um, there's a good example of like a conversation on the right hand of the side of the screen here. Uh, you know, if someone's looking for like a, a black four door sedan, you can, th that lead can get serviced by several different folks. And they can all see that same information because they can see the conversation history. Um, a good communication and marketing platform will also allow you to collect net promoter score feedback or Google reviews uh, and even more uh, just with an open text thread with customers. Um, there's lots of reporting and, and data available on what messages convert and, and increase engagement, of course. Uh, but finally, you know, automate the things you can automate. This goes back to Scott's point earlier and make it easier on your team. 
whether that's appointment, remind, appointment reminders, uh, invitations to like video chat if they wanna have a quick video chat to see the car before they can make it to the dealership, even payment requests, right? Um, if they want to make a, a reservation on the vehicle or something, if someone else is looking at it, there's a lot you can do with an open text thread with a customer. Once that communication channel is open, it really opens the door to, uh, to a great customer experience. Um, but I think I'll, I'll pass it back to, back to Scott and talk about uh, managed chat. We're really excited about this. This is a recent addition for us in your podium. Yeah, so you're all probably thinking maybe this sounds like a great idea and gonna create a whole bunch more opportunities and, and conversation opportunities, but gosh, how do I do this given you know, right now and, and having worked myself in a dealership, I know everything in store is all about the customers that are there and doing everything we can to sell a car today to the customers that are in store today. And, and frequently I heard from many dealers, you know, these strategies sound great, but I just don't, I worry that I don't have the staff to be able to, to do this well and do it on my own. So another consideration that going about this is maybe looking for vendors that can provide the chat management portion of the workflow for you. So managed uh, service, managed chat service, you know, is much more like a BDC working on your behalf. Uh, it's going to be much more financially feasible than hiring a full FTE. And so, you know, this would be an easy way to solve that problem of, of responsiveness given, you know, any kind of uh, staffing shortfalls that you might have there in the store. So next slide. So 78% of the customers, right? Just gonna sound a little bit like a broken record here. It's all about how quickly you can get that response to happen to get that first impression and keep the customer engaged with you. So again, with a chat service and a managed uh, service for you where you've got a team that can handle all those inquiries on your behalf is a strategy to get you you know, to show up better from a responsive perspective and, and accommodate any additional leads that you might be getting as a result. Um, you know, it goes without saying, if you don't respond, somebody else will. And usually that somebody else is where they're going to go do the business. So, you know, the, the longer it takes you or the quicker your competition is at beating you to the responsiveness game, you know, is, is where you can win or, you know, lose business to your competition. So, you know, the other benefits that you'll see with a managed lead response service is, and, and things that you want to look for in vendors that offer this is the type of people that they have working on your behalf. You know, some vendors will have people that have actually worked in store in dealership and know how to qualify and, and move a customer through the process to be lower funnel and ready to purchase versus uh, call center type personnel. Um, they have the ability and many times to nurture the lead for you and hand it off when it does get to a point of the customer's ready to come in, do a test drive or get evaluation on trade. Uh, taking some of the germane questions like, how do we get to the store? What days of the week are you open? What are your hours of operation? So they can lift and take some of the burden with those more germane type of inquiries. So again, kind of will help engage, engage quickly, be efficient for your team so that basically, you know, the, the handoff when it does come to the store personnel is a customer that's more lower in funnel and ready to buy. So that's kind of an ideal, you know, strategy and setup that you can, you can look for, um, you know, professionalism, stuff like that. You know, those are all just things that you want to be kind of mindful of as you're looking for a service like that. You want to, you know, choose one that focuses on relationships, right? The whole key to success in the buying, especially for the second most expensive purchase a customer is going to make is building that relationship to where they feel that they absolutely want to do business with you because you understand them and, and they like you and they trust you. So having people that are going to be managing those conversations for you, you want to make sure they're focused on, you know, everything starts with the relationship and how you earn that trust and how do you get that customer to want to, you know, be confident in your mind that their mind rather that you're the right one to do to do business with. So not only, you know, do over 20% of live chat messages go unanswered, but it's also a lot less convenient for customers to use live chat and a lot harder to transfer a live conversation 
to your dealership sales team than it is to use tech. So many opportunities, several things to look for, but um, if you're struggling with how to execute a strategy based on staffing, manage, manage service might be something for you to consider and look at. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Uh, that's a, it's a really exciting addition that we've recently added to uh, to our suite. So we're pretty excited about um, our, our managed chat service and the efficiency it's bringing to lots of dealerships. Um, but let's so we've talked so far about a lot of benefits for the dealership. Um, but let's also spend a few minutes talking about uh, why some of these ideas are still even better for the customer and create a better better customer experience as well. Um, grabbing your your customer's attention online. Uh, that's the first step in closing the deal, like we talked about, but you also have to make sure that your customers, uh, that you show your customers that you understand what they need. Um, that doing business with you will, will be easy, right? So if you can deliver on those two kind of customer experiences prom promises, then, uh, you're ahead of 90% of the businesses out there. 90, the, this left-hand stat here, 90% of customers, uh, believe most brands fail to meet their expectations. Obviously, 90% of customers, that should be really, I mean, 100% of customers want a convenient experience, right? Everybody wants convenience, uh, especially when buying a car, which is people, people typically associate with being a, a painful or a difficult process. 80% um, of customers say they'd be more loyal to a brand uh, if that brand showed they really understood them and what they were looking for. So consumers just want to, they, you know, they're saying, show me, show me, you know me, right? Show me that you, you know what I care about. This is one of my favorite stats. 62% um, of customers on a survey said they would rather hand out parking tickets uh, than wait in an automated phone tree for service, right? As, as this is one example of what can create a bad customer experience, but it's so prolific, right? Phone trees are everywhere. We encounter them probably multiple times a week as we're calling various businesses uh, that we're used to it and we forget really how uh, inconvenient and difficult of an experience it is to have to click through one of those or sit and wait, uh, wait on, on the phone, right? Um, they can help you understand what the customer needs and get them to the right person. Uh, but it's really only helpful if that customer experience remains intact and remains positive, right? Um, so this is where uh, the opportunity to do like a web chat, or even a chat bot can offer a bit more personalization than a phone tree um, because they can be responded, customers can be responded to quickly. Um, and they can also, uh, these technologies can, can infer like what a customer needs and route it to the right team just based on what the customer is asking. Um, so I, thought, I, think, I think that's an interesting example of how consumers think about uh, the customer experience. Um, so, but when customers are ready to make a high ticket purchase, you know, they want help from a real person and they, and they want that quickly, right? Uh, they're happy to surf your website and learn more about your dealership. Uh, but when it comes time to, when they find a car they want, uh, then they get real motivated. We've all seen that happen. Um, and so the, it's important to know like, when to put them in touch with someone quickly and, and when to uh, you know, let them read the available resources. So, a couple of ways that two-way texting uh, can build customer relationships. Uh, it really answers this question for us. How do you provide that more personalized human-to-human -human response at scale, especially when you have a lot of leads coming in at once? Um, this two-way text thread that we've talked about today can really help build relationships and conversations over quick chats um, as opposed to like a, a lengthy phone call. It also feels more personal, right? It lets you build one-on-one -on -one relationships. Um, they feel like you're as, as a consumer, I feel like I'm getting someone's sole attention when they're texting me, um, even though that person's probably working several leads at once. Um, so I really like that aspect of it. Um, it adds a, a level of personalization to the service for sure. So just wanted to take a few minutes and touch on you know, some of the benefits for the customer, why customers like this, so. Okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit now about customer context, right? Um, next slide. Um, a study from uh, Blake Morgan, uh, 100 stats on digital transformation customer experience uh, found 89% of the customers say they've had a frustrating experience of having to repeat themselves multiple times. So if you think about churn, you think about 
you know, people going on days off and we're still wanting to work with the customer to get to a sale sooner than better. Oftentimes we'll have other associates step in to help out and continue the conversation. But depending on the, the tools and the processes that you have in place, sometimes just trying to continue that conversation can be a contributor to a poor experience. If you're asking the customer to tell their story all over again to the next associate that's, you know, stepping up to the plate to help out and, and get the customer into a vehicle. So one of the benefits of texting is, you know, you have probably a better mechanism and easier way for whoever comes into play, however often, whenever that happens, to not be in a position to have to ask the customer to repeat themselves, tell their story over again, share why they're back in market, what vehicles have you looked at, what are you interested in? Having that continuity is, is going to be much easier to just pick up where the last rep left off and, and make it seamless to the customer that you've heard, you've understand, everybody's dialed in and, and dialed into the needs and what the customer has shared so far, and, and that's going to go a long ways to to fur furthering that customer along. So next slide, this is feedback that we got from one of our customers in terms of how it made it easier for them to keep their customers engaged. You know, the ability to just have that dialogue back and forth for, you know, the entire conversation being kind of in a single thread makes it easy for the sales team to pick up no matter who it is, pick up the conversation exactly where it left off without having the, you know, ask the customer to kind of restate their story. And it's also more convenient. It's, you know, just been easier for them to, you know, send text messages, you know, while you're working in a business office, um, you know, doesn't really matter. So they're seeing some, some immediate benefits of, of shifting to this channel. And, you know, make it easier for your team members, you know, again, fielding leads to see the contextual history. So if you think about and talk a little bit about what, you know, uh, Logan had shared, when you can move all the other possible touch points that the customer can be engaging with you and being able to see that all in one view, um, you know, this is going to eliminate a lot of the most universal frustration that customers have shared as far as you know, having to restate and having to work with multiple service reps in the store. It's part of what they don't like about the, the process. Um, and it's also going to be an opportunity for you to distinguish your dealership as providing a higher level of service because everybody's dialed in. Everybody is, you know, aware of where every customer is at. And, you know, next person stepping up to help out, you know, makes it easier to move that customer along. It's just going to be a, a significant um uh, experience from a customer perspective that will separate you from the competition. Yeah, thanks, Scott. So um, our last point here uh, is to, you know, don't forget about keeping tabs on employee performance with these new channels and these new communication methods. Um, as we, we've talked about conversion rates and we've talked about response times a lot today because it's really important. And, and the last stat we'll share here uh, you know, conversion rates increase by more than 8% when you attempt to respond within the first five minutes. Um, so that that first five minutes is really the, the golden opportunity to show the consumer that you're responsive and you care about their needs. Um, yet only 0.1% of inbound leads are engaged under five minutes, uh, which is pretty scary, but it gives you a real opportunity to stand out um, among your competition as Scott said, um, if, if you're able to do that and, and pull that off, right? So the best way to ensure this happens is to make sure that your employees have proper training and processes in place. So they know when it's their responsibility to respond to leads, especially leads from these new channels like web chat or texting. Uh, know that a fast response time is critical um, and, and knowing what tools to use, like where to see those incoming leads and, and respond to those leads. Um, so the takeaways here, uh, set response time goals and communicate with your employees about why those are so important. Um, train your employees, they can be more efficient and effective. Uh, make sure that they have you know, the skills they need to respond quickly. Uh, even if it's a, hey, thanks for contacting us. Uh, I will be back with you in a few minutes. And of course, re reward employees for meeting res lead response goals. This is the fun part, right? Um, it's important to re reward employees who are consistently responding to leads and converting those leads to sales. You know, that may be verbal recognition, 
uh, or a more formal award of some sort. Obviously, this is going to depend on, on your dealership culture, uh, but that matters a lot uh, and goes a long way um, in terms of building morale and improving employee retention, which, of course, is so important right now, um, given kind of the labor shortage challenges that we're up against. Um, so just to wrap up here, um, you know, Podium, our mission is to help local businesses win and local auto dealerships win. Uh, you know, we work with over 100,000 businesses. One in three cell phone users in the U.S. has communicated with a business through Podium, uh, through Podium's texting platform. Um, and, you know, we help local businesses like yours to win more revenue and market share, uh, compete with a modern on-demand customer experience, and improve speed and efficiency, which we've talked about a lot today. Um, so we've really enjoyed this time today. Appreciate you uh, joining and listening. And I'll turn it back over to, uh, to our moderator here. To uh, We'd love to answer any questions you may have. Excellent presentation, gentlemen. Uh, certainly very timely and, and appropriate topic as, as the automotive retail space continues to uh, evolve and change uh, uh, based on the demands of, of the buyer and, and, and customers. Again, we are uh, recording today's session, so keep watch of your uh, inbox for, for a message containing a link so you can review the great information that Scott and Logan have shared and, and distributed uh, around to your teammates uh, at your dealership. Uh, so if you do have any questions for our guest experts, just use the uh, chat function here on Zoom. Uh, if, you, if you do have any questions for Scott Sabo, uh, Partnership Growth Manager, and Logan Wooden, Product Marketing Manager at Podium. And, and, and gentlemen, uh, certainly a question that uh, has come up uh, different times during the uh, previous webinars that, that our shop has done with your teammates at Podium. Uh, uh, a dealership uh, might already have an email list. Uh, can they just go ahead and use it to, to send SMS marketing messages to, to those same customers? Uh, each of you uh, would love to hear your response to, to that question of, of just taking an email list and, and leveraging it for, for SMS marketing as well. Yeah, um, I'll take a first run at that, Logan. Um, sure. Yeah, that's something we can definitely do. You know, if you've got cell phone information in there, um, the other thing that you want to make sure that you have is, you know, attestation that the customer has given you their permission to market through text. Uh, the one governance policy that kind of oversees text marketing is known as TCPA. And if you don't have that, you may not want to use a, an upload list. And in that case, there's also ways that we can help you build a subscriber list so that we can make sure that you are compliant and, and not having any issues with TCPA compliance. But yes, if you have all those things, that is certainly another way to get things kind of kicked off on a, on a text marketing strategy. Yeah, we, we didn't touch too much on text marketing today. Obviously, today was more about you know managing demand um, and, and lead management, of course. But um, but we have some good resources on text message marketing. We've seen some really great use cases um, at dealerships with things you know whether it's promotions, you know holiday promotions or what have you, um, or even uh, like buyback, uh, buyback promotions and incentives. Um, you know, we've seen dealerships uh, be able to, you know, buy back uh, seven or eight cars, you know, in a, in a 48 hour period. It's really, 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 really great results. But yes, as Scott mentioned, SMS, uh, text, text message marketing is more personal, right? Our, our cell phones are a bit more personal than our email address. So they're, they're more protected legally, um, which I'm grateful for. Uh, I, get a, I get a few spam texts, but not nearly as many as I get spam emails. So, so the great thing, Podium, you know, we offer more uh, methods for collecting that consent than any other provider on the market, right? Um, so, you know, someone chats in uh, through your web chat and your website uh, with Podium, they'll have an option to, you know, you know would you like to opt in for, uh, you know, marketing campaigns from our business or what have you. So we, we offer lots of ways to build that list for you. So you can have thousands of customers on your marketing list in just a matter of months. 
closing moments here on our webinar titled Eight Ways Dealerships Can Manage Demand with Speed and Efficiency with two of the experts from Podium, Scott Sabo, the Partnership Growth Manager, and Logan Wooden, the Product Marketing Manager. And again, there on the screen is a, is a guide that you can uh, download bit.ly at SMS Marketing uh, hyphen 101 that's uh, can be a resource for, for you and your teammates at, at your store. And, and again, uh, keep watch of uh, a message containing a link to today's uh, webinar so you can review the great information that Scott and Logan already have shared. And, and, and gentlemen, just, just to round us out, uh, per, perhaps reiterating a, a little bit from, from what you've already shared, but it's, just, a, just some closing thoughts about uh, what, what campaigns can be effective for a store to, to leverage SMS marketing, uh, maybe some initial steps if, if, some, if a store is doing a complete revamp of, of their entire marketing uh, department or, or any other closing thoughts about how we as consumers are, are interacting with, with dealerships today. Uh, Logan, let, let, let's turn back to you and then, and then Scott will, will have the last word. Uh, just any, any closing thoughts on, on campaigns or best practices or, or how to get started? Logan, we'll go back to you and, and Scott will round us out. Sure thing, thank you. Yeah, I think the number one place to start um, is, is really in looking at your, uh, your buyer's journey, right? How do most buyers find your business? And how do they connect with your business, uh, right? And by connect, I mean communicate. How do they communicate with, their, with your business? There's surely uh, you know, a wealth of opportunities that you'll find you can better connect with uh, and, and be found by consumers. Um, and in our opinion, text message is, is, should be at the top of the list um, as one of the best places in terms of low hanging fruit to get started. Um, text messaging is, is a new channel and is, is pretty intuitive for both the employees at your business and your consumers. Um, so that would, be, uh, that would be my kind of two cents on, on how to get started on this, is to really put yourself in the consumer's shoes and, uh, and, and try it out, you know, see, see how text messages work for a couple of weeks. And then to add on to what Logan has shared and what I've seen and, and heard from other dealers that have actually adopted a more robust text strategy is, there's so many opportunities to exploit that can dramatically enhance the customer experience. And an interesting stat that I've seen uh, in some of the other conversations that I've had is 72% of customers, I think, have shared that if they have a great first customer experience, a better than average, better than you know the other competition out there, they are more likely to come back for repeat visits. And when you look at the customer post-sale and, and the need to keep them engaged and, and working with you from a service perspective, you know that, that first experience on the sales side, working with the customer in a better way, can lead to more business on the service side. And again, knowing they're receptive to promotional offers and stuff like that when they're working with somebody that they know is going to deliver a better experience, that sets you up more to make those campaigns for moving them over to fixed operations life cycle much more effective, much more successful. A uh, couple quick uh, observations I've had with dealers that have done this, you know, think of the last couple of years under the pandemic and the move to contactless payment and being able to uh, offer that not only from a health concern safety perspective, but from a convenience perspective where you can make it more easy for the customer to complete their transaction in the service department at their time and their schedule and you know, uh, do that securely to where they can then pick up the car after hours. It may seem like a little thing, but it's such a huge impact to the customer experience. That can be a thing that keeps them coming back for years for following services. So there's tons of opportunities like that that you can also look to a text-based communication strategy to enhance that overall customer experience and maintain a, a fuller customer lifecycle engagement with you. That's a great way to, to leave it, gentlemen. Again, eight ways dealerships can manage demand with speed and efficiency. Featuring Logan Wooden, 
the product marketing manager, and Scott Sabo, partnership growth manager, both experts from Podio. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure uh, listening to, to today's presentation. Thank you so much for sharing such great information and, and recommendations to help uh, dealerships of all shapes and sizes. Thank you, gentlemen. You bet. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And on behalf of all of us at Cherokee Media Group, my name is Nick Zulovich. We thank you for joining us, and we look forward to having you again next time.